Hey guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley. And today we are here to discuss Married to Medicine season eight, episode two. Let me just say, Simone, I think that you are out of line and you are an awful friend. And I hope that Jackie has nothing to do with you going forward. But let me not jump ahead. Let's just jump right on into it because we don't have a minute to spare. We start the episode right back where we left off, back at Heavenly's house, Damon's party, and we see Toya storming off to where the husbands are now, and she's screaming and being very belligerent about how she cannot stand their wives and how she's just over it. Eugene is like, babe, like calm down, let's take a walk. So they go off and he's trying to talk her off the ledge. Eugene, I'm really sorry that you have to deal with this because Toya really acts like she is still 21 years old and it's very sad. I mean, just the immaturity, it really seeps through her pores. You're always having to excuse her outbursts and her bad behavior. And I know it gets tiring, but I digress. God bless you. You seem to love Toya and all of her mess. And if you love it, that's just great. So now we are back on over to the ladies. Simone tells Heavenly that yes, she should have picked up the phone and told Heavenly that they were fine, she doesn't harbor any ill feelings, and that they are good. Heavenly says, cool, but what we really need to talk about is you and Jackie because that is the big elephant in the room. Simone turns to Jackie, lets her know that she felt some sort of way when Jackie said that her friendship with Heavenly is on the same level as her friendship with Simone. Simone felt very slighted because it's like, wow, how can you compare your friendship with Heavenly when me and you have been friends for 20 years? I mean, Simone has a right to feel how she feels. However, I just find it to be very middle school that you're feeling some sort of way that your friend is now good friend to somebody else. I don't know. I just feel like Simone is being very immature about this and the end of their friendship is pretty much going to be her fault, to be very honest with you, because the way she carried on throughout this episode, I was just so disgusted. But anyways, I digress. So we see Jackie say that she was upset because Simone didn't defend her regarding the whole Buffy situation. So they're talking about that, going back and forth, and obviously nothing is being solved. Everybody's feelings are getting more and more hurt. Simone gets up, starts yelling, getting loud, like she always does, and someone in the comments for last week's recap, you hit the nail on the head when you said that Simone suffers from arrested development. That's exactly what it is. Simone is still stuck in a middle school way of thinking at her big age, and it is really a shame to watch. So now Simone goes off, and she has the nerve to be sobbing like somebody's done something to her. And Cecil comes over like, you know, what's wrong? What happened? And so she's just like, um, I'm done. I'm over this. I want to leave. So she comes back over to say goodbye to everybody. Of course, she can't just keep it at a goodbye. She ends up bringing up Heavenly's tweets regarding Cecil. Now, wasn't that two seasons ago? So why are you bringing that up? And five minutes ago, you just said that you don't harbor any ill feelings towards Heavenly. So then why are you still mad about those tweets? I said, you know what? These women get on my last good nerve. So now Heavenly starts getting defensive. And so she starts screaming like a banshee. And it gets so bad that Damon has to come over and tell her to calm down. I feel so bad for Damon. And I know that I say that all the time, but I really feel bad for him. I just feel like he's so unhappy and so miserable being with her. Like he just never seems excited to see her. Like he just seems so over it. Heavenly and Damon give me 
Jackie Christie and Doug Christie vibes. Heavenly is crazier than a soup sandwich. But again, I digress. So at this point, the party is over. They all get back on the party bus on their way home. And we see the next scene. It's Toya. She has just come back from playing tennis. And we see her sons. They are doing some schoolwork. She lets us know that their last school had hardly any black kids in it. She said she could count them on one hand. So she was like, oh no, we're going to pull them right on out. So then she also lets them know that their tuition is $25,000 per child. So she's like, do you know what mommy could do with that money? She could buy a Gucci purse. I said, Toya, you never waste a chance to name drop or be tacky and let us know how much money you're spending on something. Don't you get tired? Her and Sheree Whitfield suffer from the same thing. They both have delusions of grandeur. Why did you feel the need to tell your kids how much their tuition is? They're like nine and 10. They're not thinking about that. I just really laugh when Toya tries to showboat because it's like, you're just so tacky. Like her and Heavenly are two tacky women. So next we see Contessa and Scott. They are headed over to their new practice. They are looking through all the renovations. Everything is coming together nicely. They're pleased. They're talking about how they're going to get it inspected in the next week. And they're just really happy about what's to come. So then they take a few minutes to talk about their marriage and how it is up and down. It's a roller coaster pretty much. And they keep having the same argument over and over again. I just am not buying this storyline of them having marital problems. I'm really not. Because when they first came on the show, they had such a solid foundation. You could tell they really still loved each other and liked each other. You can also see their chemistry on the screen. So all of a sudden now they're having problems. I mean, yeah, last season he was upset that she was going to school in another state and wasn't there for the kids and wasn't there for him. And for some reason, I just did not buy it. It just screamed, we're doing this to stay on the show and to collect this Bravo check. But again, that's just me. And a lot of you all in my comments from last week's episode, you also feel that Scott and Contessa are playing around for the spotlight. You guys don't buy it either. So again, I was kind of like, mm-hmm, like... I just don't believe it. But hey, maybe he is a cheater. Maybe they really are going through the motions, but I'm personally not buying it. So the next scene, we see Dr. Heavenly at her dental practice, and we find out that she was actually closed for two months due to the pandemic and all the restrictions, but now she is back up and running and business is going smoothly we see one of her patients and it is the famous, or should I say the infamous, Funky Dineva. And we find out that Funky and Heavenly are actually good friends. They met in Atlanta at an event years ago. And she says that they both are very similar in the fact that folks get very offended by what they say. And I said, uh-huh. She told no lies. There are quite a few videos where Funky has pissed me off, especially that recent Basketball Wives video. Yeah, Funky, I'm talking to you, okay? But that those Basketball Wives videos, Funky, we're not seeing eye to eye on that. I was cracking up because when Heavenly said in her confessional, you can't be talking about other people when you have messed up teeth yourself. And I said, she better say that. I said, okay, you see the doll, honey? The doll had braces when she was a teenager, okay? <laughs> you see this million dollar Colgate smile, all right? <laughs> I said, I can sit up here and flap my gums and you see, <laughs> I'm always gonna give it to you, all right? I take that option away of ever trying to come for the doll's looks, honey, because I'm gonna always give it to you. <laughs> but she's right, you cannot get up here looking crazy, talking about other people. I mean, you can do it, but then you open the door for other people to critique you, okay? 
I feel like if you're gonna critique me on anything, it's not gonna be on how I look. All right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's about to do what she's about to do, and she's about to show what the girls should have did. But I digress. So next we see Anila. And we remember Anila. She is Toya's good friend. And she is the newest cast member of the show. She's at home. She's in the kitchen with her housekeeper and her two kids. Her kids were adorable. And so they're just playing around. And we find out that before she was married, she was actually a big time fashion forecaster in New York. And she was zipping it and zooming it. She was really getting it on and popping, okay? She was flourishing. And she said that that all went to the wayside when she got married and had kids. She became a stay-at-home mom. But then we find out that she's now a mommy blogger and she's doing really well and she really likes it. And so we see her husband, he comes home after a long day of work. He is an ocular surgeon, if I caught that, yeah. So she's asking him if there's any way that he can catch up on the two months that he was not working because of the pandemic. And then she goes on to say how lucky Toya and Eugene are that they built their house at the right time before COVID. They're already in their dream house and how they could not have picked a worse time to build their dream home. And so we find out that her and Toya met through their builders. And we see uh, Anila's house, how it's being built right now as we speak. And it's gorgeous. It is huge. And she's going to be neighbors to Toya. For me, I am still feeling Anila out. She seems cool. I get the impression that she's about to do the most, though. I'm going to reserve judgment until like episode four or five. But all I have to say is welcome and let's see what she's all about. She might be a nice addition to the show. For some reason though, she's giving me Lisa Nicole vibes. I do not know why, but she just is. And I could not stand Lisa Nicole. But again, I'm going to refrain from making a snap judgment and just feel her out and just give her the benefit of the doubt that she's going to be a nice addition to the group. So we get to the next scene and it is the day of Michael's graduation party. Simone says that she is just so excited and so happy to see her son, you know, getting ready for college. She was really happy to see him at his graduation ceremony. She was nervous that because of COVID, it was gonna be canceled, but nope, by the grace of God, she saw him, he walked down that stage, got his diploma and she is a proud mom. So they are in a parking lot and we see that there's a food truck for um, everybody and they're waiting for all their friends and family to arrive. So they're just talking and Simone is joking about how she wants Michael to focus on his grades and Cecil's like, come on, like, you know, have some fun. And even Michael's like, look, I'm gonna focus on grades and girls. And so Simone is just laughing like, no, no. Then we find out that Dr. Simone was a bartender in college. She was also dating um, this guy who had a seven series BMW and Cecil was looking like, okay, like who is this girl? You know, she got it going on. And so Simone jokes about how Cecil was checking her out and how she had no idea that he drove a Hyundai. And so Cecil's laughing and she's like, if I had known you had driven a Hyundai, you wouldn't have gotten none of this. So they're all cracking up laughing. So we see Dr. Eugene arrive first. He's congratulating Michael saying he's proud of him, how he remembers when he was a little boy and how it's just so funny because when he met Michael, Michael was the same age that his boys are now, like nine or 10. So now we see their family, um, you know, cousins are arriving, everybody's arriving, and the party's getting started. And then we see Toya and the boys arrive, Eugene leaves. Then we see Anila and her family get there. We find out that Simone and Anila have hung out a few times and Simone really likes Anila a lot. They have become fast friends. So while the party is going on, people are getting their food, eating and drinking, just having a grand time. We see Toya and the ladies over at the table and they're just talking. 
And so Toya decides to make a joke about how she sees Dr. Jackie in the distance. And so they look over and it's just a random woman walking and they're just kind of like, really Toya? And Toya is just kind of saying that she wished that Jackie was there and, you know, why didn't Simone invite her? And Simone just being flippant and, you know, immature as usual. Simone can be very, very cold. Like, it's very sad. I don't know if it's a defense mechanism. I don't know if she went through something maybe traumatic with friends before in the past, in her childhood, but she just has a very cold demeanor. So while the party is going on, we see a little short scene with Dr. Jackie and Curtis. They're making dinner at their house and Jackie says that she is hurt about Dr. Simone not inviting her to Michael's graduation party. And my heart really broke when she talked about how not only have they been friends for 20 years, but she delivered Michael. And I was just kind of like, wow, that is such a slap in the face that your friend would pull a stunt like this. Simone is going to regret not inviting Jackie. Like that's a milestone event that only happens once in a person's life. And for you to rob Jackie of witnessing Michael go off to college, that's really sad. I feel silly for even hoping that Simone can be a grown woman and be mature about something. Like I really need to let that fantasy die because Simone just doesn't have the capacity or the mental bandwidth to be a decent human being. But again, if I were Jackie, I would not have anything left to say to Simone. This would have been the end of our friendship officially. So we get to the final scene of the night and it is Simone. She is at Heavenly's house and they are going to hash out their issues. Honestly, it felt like they were rehashing issues that we've already discussed and gone over for the past two or three seasons. Like I was just so over it. Simone brings up the tweets once again. Heavenly says, you know what? I take ownership and I'm going to be more mindful about what I say. And it's like, Heavenly, you've been saying that for years. You even had a spiritual advisor try to help you. And we saw where that went. It went absolutely nowhere because you just don't have the good sense that God gave you. So then Heavenly goes on to say that she actually felt hurt because when Mariah was spreading those lies about how Damon was cheating on her, she felt like Simone sided with Mariah and also was getting some sort of pleasure seeing Heavenly hurt. I was like, Heavenly, I thought y'all had already moved past that. Like, wasn't that two seasons ago? Mariah's not even on the show anymore. So why are you bringing up some old 2018, 2019 stuff? I, I was so over it. So they get past all of that and Heavenly brings up, what are we gonna do about you and Jackie? And we see Simone say that they are at rock bottom and she truly doesn't know and she's getting emotional about it. I was kind of like, girl, save it. I feel like it's mostly all Simone's fault of why they're in the boat that they're in. Like, it's just so interesting to me how Simone wants to be the victim and the villain at the same time. You're either this cold, heartless bitch or you want to salvage this friendship. You certainly didn't want to salvage it by not inviting her to a huge milestone event. Like, girl, I I'm just really over the tears and the nonsense that Simone is bringing so far in these two episodes. I'm just over it. So that's where the episode ends and... Simone is going to wear me thin all season long, along with Scott and Contessa's marital woes storyline. But again, I want to thank you all for watching this recap. I hope you all enjoy and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.